This is not the October that we had hoped for. Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto stocks, the whole gosh darn shebang, not looking too good. Everything's just kind of meh at the moment. Where's my October, man? I was promised an October, gosh darn it. Well, in today's video, I want to talk with you about the technicals for Bitcoin, as well as looking at some of the macro stories that are affecting the markets right now. Everything from diesel to China. Lots of goods in today's video. My name's Lark. I make videos on investing. If you like that topic, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. Do a thumbs up on this button too. If you do appreciate this kind of content, now let's get into it. So while we had all been hoping for October to come in for crypto, because seven of the last nine Octobers have been green months, instead it seems we're getting Crab-tober, with basically the markets continuing to move sideways. Still got two weeks to go though. Still could have an October come out just before the midterm elections in the US maybe. Maybe, maybe, we shall see. But there's of course a lot of big macro headwinds continuing to push on markets. For example, the inflation data came in last week. The consumer price index came down just a little bit to 8.2%. That's of course down from its high in June of 9.1%. But that 8.2% figure was higher than expected. People were expecting 8.1%. Percent. So we did see inflation fall month over month. However, inflation still at 8.2%. With inflation remaining so gosh darn high, the Federal Reserve is going to have to keep tightening, keep increasing those rate hikes that they have been pushing for such a long time now. This is not going to bode super well for the equity markets. How much of this is already priced in? We shall see. But this kind of stubbornly high inflation along with rising interest rates is like a wrecking ball right now hitting the markets. So we must be cautious. While inflation remains so high, I can't think we can have any sort of expectation of a pivot by the US Federal Reserve. And regardless of what all the other central banks in the world do, nothing really matters that much until the Fed says, well, enough is enough. Then we have other things like this. Diesel hits chaos mode and fresh blow for the global economy. Yikes, yet another energy related issue hitting, well, at this time, Europe once again. So of course, diesel is massively important, powers our trucks, our trains, our, our ships, everything that drives industry and global economy. What is this picture of Justin Sun doing here? Come on, man, come on, man. Trying to talk, Justin, you looking at me like that? Ah, anyway. <laughs> Now look, you have this situation with the diesel markets right now. The fuel is commanding huge buy it now premiums in Europe. There's also, of course, to make matters worse, big strikes at French oil refineries over the last few weeks. So yikes, it just, you know, we've got all this stuff going on right now with the energy markets in Europe from, you know, Nord Stream getting blown up to the just disruptions caused by the conflict going on, the war going on right now in Ukraine, Russia being one of the biggest energy suppliers to the continent. It's just a mess. OPEC cutting supplies, all this crazy going on. It's a lot for markets to absorb. If it was just an energy supply crisis, we could probably find some kind of way to manage all this, but we have the inflation. We have the interest rate hikes. We have all the other stuff going on. And then this, let's talk about China. So new crackdown, Biden wages global campaign on Chinese technology. US officials push to choke off China's access to critical semiconductor technology. This is a big move by the US, big escalation of course. And they say, well, look, China's using the semiconductor technology to make hypersonic missiles and Gets a bit, uh, it gets to be a pretty deep topic if we go into it. And I don't want to go into all the political angle of this, but the reality is, is that this attack on the Chinese semiconductor industry, semiconductors which are basically necessary for everything, is gonna hit the Chinese economy. Or potentially see China retaliating with a new wave of their own sanctions, right? Which again, just ratchets up the tension globally on a political level, which then crosses over into markets, creates more uncertainty in markets. What's gonna happen in China? How is China gonna react to the semiconductor crisis now being uh, made in their country? Will they get through it? Will they come out better than before? Will semiconductor prices go up on this news? If so, that means everything is gonna go up in price because semiconductors are in all digital gadgets. At the same time, we have Xi Jinping getting reelected 
to be uh, the premier for the, the CCP in China once again. He's his third term coming up now. So he gave a speech basically talking about how we've got Hong Kong now fully in submission and that Taiwan is the next priority, basically. Again, that brings more potential for conflict into East Asia, which is, you know, in many ways, the beating heart of the global manufacturing economy, certainly. You know, if there's any kind of conflict in Taiwan that doesn't just affect China and Taiwan, which are massive in themselves, that affects all global shipping routes, that affects Japan, that affects Korea, Vietnam, Southeast Asia, like it's a mess. It's a mess, but that is what's going on right now. Lots of uncertainty in the markets, lots of crazy in the markets. Now, before we get into talking about the Bitcoin charts, just a reminder, if you don't yet have a self, yourself an account over on Bybit, you need to get one. It is the best exchange for longing and shorting Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the top coins. 0% trading fees for spot markets, 0% market maker fees as well on futures markets, and you can get up to $4,450 in bonuses using the link down below in the description. So go ahead and check that out. Now, our old boy Bitcoin. Now this is the linear chart here. We did finally get that breakout above this downtrend line. However, hasn't been super convincing so far. We did get a little, little just bounce out of that range. Came back down, tested that line, came back down, tested that line. Still pushing sideways though, basically. So this isn't the big grand move you'd hope for in the break of such a downtrend line, right? You wanna really get some momentum coming through here. And this has kind of been like, we had a little pop over and then just kind of once again, meh, not that much. We're still just moving sideways for Bitcoin, man. Holy cow. And of course the real line to beat is not on the linear chart. I, I like to use logarithmic chart. The linear chart is our first hint of hopium, right? This is the real line to beat, which currently is around $26,000. We do have major areas of price resistance right there around $25,000. Maybe we see a, a retest of that line at some point here in the not so distant future during this bear market, right? We will have massive bear market rallies. Some of the biggest rallies in markets happen during a bear market. So if we get any kind of rally on Bitcoin, until we get convincingly over this orange line right here, we are definitely stuck in that downtrend. Now, one other thing I want to mention here too is the Bollinger Band width. So the Bollinger Bands have been tightening up big time here on Bitcoin because we have basically just been moving sideways for months now, actually. I mean, realistically, if we go right back to the middle of June, we have basically been just bouncing back and forth around $20,000 as sort of the average price throughout that time. But right now the Bollinger Band width has reached levels. That's this right down here, right, right here. It has reached the levels that basically indicate big upcoming volatility. Now the Bollinger Bands, they don't necessarily say which direction we're most likely to expect volatility in. However, it is a bear market. And a lot of the times that we've seen the Bollinger Bands getting this tight has resulted in downside volatility. Look at this, 18 August, downside volatility. Um, what do we have here? 8th July, downside volatility. 1st June, a few days later, massive downside volatility. Then look here, we've got 29 April, massive downside volatility. Again, these big crashes here are all times we had the Bollinger Bands getting super tight. That kind of volatility, that kind of boredom in the market tends to precede these volatile events. And in a bear market, those volatile events are more likely to be down versus up. So just a thought there for you. It's an interesting indicator to be watching right now with all the macro crazy going on. That's kind of lining up to show us that we should be approaching the markets with a bit of caution right now, a bit of skepticism perhaps at the moment. Now the rational root over here on Twitter pointed out that getting above the short-term holder cost basis and staying above it as a major signal for price recovery. Like currently that's at $21,700. Now this is a very important area because right now, $21,700, that basically lines up approximately with the 100-day exponential moving average, which Bitcoin has not even touched for a very, 
very long time. Last time we even touched it was the 21st of April. Long time, long time since we touched that. In fact, the 50-day exponential moving average, the orange line on the chart here, has been the defining line for Bitcoin in this downtrend, much in the opposite way that it's a defining line in an uptrend, it's a defining line now in our downtrend. So we had a major rejection for the 50-day exponential moving average back here on the 5th and 6th of October. We had just a few days ago on the 14th of October, another attempt to get up here, but smashed down once again at the 50-day exponential moving average. Until we get some definitive movement over that line, again, we can't really start talking about too much exciting happening in the market. We are just in the crab moving sideways. I mean, look at this, even this big volatile move down the other day to $18,250 just came down basically to tap a previous area of price support. Most of our price action has been trading in this range between $18,500 and $20,500. And that range keeps getting squeezed by the 50-day EMA pushing downward. So lots of risks remain in the market right now, very much in a boring time right now for the markets with not a whole lot going on. There's still great news stories coming out. The fundamentals are great. People keep buying Bitcoin, but markets are very uncertain right now. There's a lot of risk in markets right now, and there's very real potential for more downside. I would say areas around 14 to $16,000 would not be out of the question if we see further corrections for the price of Bitcoin. Obviously, all of our fingers are crossed for a mega rally and for the bears to go hibernate, but this is what I'm seeing at the moment. But let me know what you think. Do you think we could get down to 14 or 16K potentially as a bottom for this crypto bear market for Bitcoin? Or is that too pessimistic? Maybe the bottom already came in a couple of months ago. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.